And look, everybody, I thought there was one in the tree. Remember I said there's a squirrel alarm calling. And I thought it was too far away from the termite mound. And there is the other one there sitting in the tree. Isn't that cool? Look at that tree. <laughs> All I heard was the alarm calling there and I then put my binoculars onto that tree and I thought there's something in there. And there is little, I don't know, I, I think that's Charlotte. Although George seemed to be the tree climber earlier, I think that's Charlotte. The eyes are just slightly browner than the one we've been looking at. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that is so wonderful. I wonder if she knows she's been spotted, I doubt it. Ah, oh, that's definitely Charlotte, everyone. I can see the eyes. They're much browner. Now, Shannon in Ohio, I know this isn't the best view, but we're just going to stick with it for now. And it's shaking because I'm just moving slightly. We're right at the end of the lens. Um, Shannon, you say, will they be able to kill anything at this stage of their lives? Yes, they will. They will kill small things like lizards. Uh, I mean, I know it sounds a bit facetious, but they'll kill things like termites as well. And eventually, fairly soon, they will start to take things like mice and gerbils if they can get hold of them but also birds franklins i think are the ones that are going to cop it from these two little things and you can see um, that or you can hear that there's a squirrel alarm calling at that little leopard and the leopard will become i don't know if it's instinctual or whether it is a an instinctual learning process where it will make a she will make a connection between the fact that it becomes difficult to kill things with the squirrel shouting at her. I think very soon, though, she'll realize that the squirrel and the bird alarm calling is a function of her presence, and that will then help her. Once she's made that connection, that will help her to catch uh, smaller prey, you know, because she'll try and avoid being seen by things like squirrels and birds. So I think Franklin's will be the next on the menu. I think they're a little bit small for that just yet. But you can see they're brilliant tree climbers already, highly competent and very comfortable actually being almost completely arboreal. Joey, a nice question from Australia. You say, why do leopards have such small um, litters compared with lions and cheetahs? Joey, they're not that much smaller, but they are smaller. And let's, let's address each one separately. Lions, larger litters, uh, often sort of four will survive, normally three, uh, but up to six. Remember, they're social, so they live in a group it's much easier to feed them if they're all together. Whereas, obviously, with a leopard, she's solitary, she's got only herself to look after them. So I think it's purely a function of the fact that there's a pride, they're easier to look after when lions, and therefore they're between one and a half to two times the number that they're going to be otherwise. Then, if we look at cheetah, cheetah, probably slightly larger litters, Joey, I wouldn't say much larger at all. I mean, I've often seen three cheetah cubs together. That's not too unusual. And I don't think that that's... Uh, leopards, you will often find three. Normally only two will survive, sometimes only one. And I think you'll find with cheetah, there's almost a little bit of what we call R selection, or K selection, sorry, where they almost have extra cubs as an insurance policy. They don't have a very good success rate, and so I think you'll find that they probably maintain three or four for a little bit longer, almost as an insurance policy, Joey. That would be my, my guess for cheetah. Lions more, simply because there's more to eat, there's greater protection 
inner pride.